Hi, everyone. Thanks, Mark. Uh, this is Adam Weinroth. I'm Chief Marketing Officer for Invoiced. Um, we're very happy to be joined by our partners at Lob and Earth Class Mail for this very exciting webinar topic, which is all about how you can automate paper billing and collections process uh, throughout your AR. Um, so we've got some great guests today. Before I fully introduce them, I just want to give you a quick overview of what we're going to cover. Uh, so first of all, we're going to talk about the situation with AR in general, what automating AR really means in case you don't know. Um, we're also going to talk about why um, paperless billing and um, uh, things like that, moving to digital, digital transformation of your financial operations, it can't always be instantaneous. Um, we're also going to talk about how you can automate postal mail with LOB give you a little bit of an overview of what they do. Um, same thing with our friends at Earth Class Mail um, who have some really cool capabilities around digitizing paper check acceptance. Um, we're also going to give you the quick overview of how Invoiced automates AR. And then what we're gonna do is uh, have uh, Invoice CEO, Jared King, who's with us, um, give a live demo of how all these pieces, Invoiced, Lob, and Earth Class Mail all integrate and work together to fully automate paper-based AR processes. Um, after that, we'll have some time for Q&A uh, to go through the questions, but please feel free to go ahead and add in your questions to the chat that Mark pointed out as we go. You don't need to wait. Uh, we'll get to all those in the Q&A. Um, so first, I uh, just want to introduce everybody. We have uh, Mark Pinard, um, who uh, spoke first and covered some of the housekeeping items. Mark's head of product marketing for LOB. We have Jared King, who's CEO and co-founder of Invoiced. And we have Stephen Bell, who is Director of Partnerships for Earth Class Mail. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Um, first, just kind of big picture with AR automation, the need for it, and what's driving adoption. Um, if you look at finance and accounting as functions within business, you can clearly see that they're moving to the cloud. And that's even more true this past 18 months or so. Uh, where people are, because of work from home, remote work, scattered teams, um, and need to be able to access everything anywhere, um, there's been a huge surge of movement of finance and accounting to the cloud. But that's largely been about software and data. And what we're seeing is that in many cases, financial operations are just stuck. You might have cloud-based software, all of your data might reside in the cloud, but you can still find yourself doing a lot of manual work with those digital technologies. Um, and so that's a problem that uh, a lot of businesses are trying to address and one that we as a software company are trying to address. Just some stats here that I think are relevant. Um, you know, that uh, what I just mentioned about financial operations being stuck, that's especially true for invoicing. So if you look at worldwide invoice volume, there were an estimated 550 billion invoices issued in calendar year 2019. Um, that is more than a half a trillion invoices. And only 10% of those were estimated to be paperless invoices that were sent only digitally. So that means that the remainder of that half a trillion invoices um, were paper bills. And uh, so that just shows you kind of where we are on that adoption curve from a, a billing standpoint in terms of what medium is being used. Um, the same is true or similar is true for check payments. So in 2018, which is the most recent data that's available um, from the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta, um, there were 14 and a half billion check payments. Um, and if you look at those, it, it tilts a little bit towards business and government. Uh, but also uh, the remaining 40% of those payments were made by consumers by check. Um, and, you know, the thing to understand here is, and hopefully you've, uh, this is part of the reason why you've joined the webinar, is that not all of your customers are necessarily moving towards our paperless digital world at the same time and at the same speed. Um, so if you want to have a great customer experience, that meets the preferences and the expectations of your customers, wherever they may be and however they wanna transact with you. It's important to be sensitive to that and to tailor your technology stack 
to those realities. Uh, just a few more stats and facts to, to tee up the topic. So 80% um, of consumers save their paper statements and invoices for their records. They just want to keep records and they want to have those in paper. That's 80% of people. Um, a third of consumers uh, say that they save paper statements as a physical reminder to make a payment. So they want to have it on their kitchen counter. They want to have it on their desk so that it's in their face and reminds them very visually and very, um, very immediately to make any payments that are outstanding. Um, and then it was also measured that four in 10 people still pay by check. Um, and then we see differences depending on the category of bill that is being sent. So for example, 74% uh, of people prefer paper for medical bills, 71% for things like property taxes, and 69% for vehicle renewals. Um, another stat that's not on here that I thought was worth mentioning is that this number is actually pretty high. It's 51% for internet service bills. Um, so even though it's for their internet service, they still prefer more than half prefer to have that as a paper bill. Um, so these just show you that people all have different needs. It depends on who they are, what their situation is. That goes for consumers and businesses. And it also even depends on the categories of bills that they're receiving and the types of payments that they want to make. Um, so what I'd like to do now that we've sort of teed up that topic, we've teed up the notion that not everyone is moving towards paperless at the same time. Uh, we have two partners that we've integrated with. We're going to show you more about that integration. And they solve really well um, some of these um, uh, issues when it comes to bridging the gap between your customers who are ready to go completely paperless from both a billing and payment standpoint and others who still wanna keep uh, a leg on the other side. Um, so with that, I'd like to introduce Mark and turn it over to him. Yeah, hey everyone. Um, and this statement that, that's on the screen now is really the cornerstone of why LOB was, was created, right? Um, our primary objective is, is to make uh, direct mail a feasible channel for everyone and give you the flexibility and ease of execution and the same access to performance data that, that you would expect with email. Um, and that's really what we look to solve. Um, next slide. And the way, that, the way that we actually do that is via APIs. Um, our goal is to actually integrate with all the systems where your data sits. So to bring direct mail to the data rather than the data to the direct mail. And I think that's incredibly important. So now it's a direct integration with your CRM systems your marketing tech stack, uh, your CDP, your iPass, wherever your data sits can now actually be direct mail can be executed directly from there. So think about you know automated triggered campaigns, whatever you might run, depending on transactional marketing, you can do that directly via the API within the systems that you currently use in your current workflow. The other big thing is utilizing HTML templates to bring your to build your creative. What that does is allows you uh, infinite, honestly, personalization from copy to form factors, to color, to imagery, whatever it might be, you can actually customize that piece to make sure that it's, it's reaching the right audience in the right segment and that it's getting you know, uh, you know, reaction and engagement with the actual audience that you intended to do. And one of the big things about Law that we've actually built out is a print delivery network of 22 commercial grade printers across the entire US. And what that allows us to do is be the fastest to the actual mailbox, at the lowest cost. So we have things like intelligent location-based routing. So if your campaign or your transactional, uh, you know, uh, direct mail is going towards the East Coast, we'll work with a print partner on the East Coast to facilitate that to ensure that it's actually getting into uh, the mail stream as quickly as possible. And then lastly, tracking and analytics. In the past, direct mail has typically uh, been in a silo and run as a as a separate actual, uh, you know, campaign. Now, what we do via API is allow you to actually bring those tracking analytics back into the system and look at it across your entire campaign strategy or from a transactional mail standpoint, um, understand exactly what the performance of that. And we also have built out direct integrations with the USPS so that you have uh, scans across the entire portion of, you know, the, as the mail goes through the mail stream, including the last scan as it gets into the, the end user's in, inbox. Um, and then lastly, uh, for us, the 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 uh, on the next slide, 
the four main value props for us that we basically just covered is, is that one-on-one -on -one personalization. So being able to customize your direct mail piece based on the audience and the segment that you're targeting, the speed to market at the lowest cost, which I think is absolutely incredibly important. Um, operational efficiency, because we are API based, we now integrate with your workflow rather than having to create a workflow that's in silo. And then lastly, that omni-channel orchestration. So now direct mail is part of your actual campaign flow or your transactional strategy and no longer sits in a silo and, and operates on itself. It operates with the rest of uh, your workflow as well. That's great. Thanks a lot, Mark. Steven, take it away. Thanks, Adam. Um, yeah, so with Earth Class Mail, we are essentially an outsourced mailroom for individuals or businesses. Um, then we operate 80 plus sites, uh, virtual address networks around the country. So you sign up for a virtual address and then your mail is forwarded to our secure operating facilities. We receive it. We digitize it, turn it into a high def uh, PDF that is text searchable. And then you take control of it just like you would manage your inbox with email. Uh, the interface is real similar to that. Um, we also have API integrations which allow us to connect with people like invoice.com to have that uh, seamlessly integrated into other programs. Uh, next slide. So we have a handful of services that are all based around um, you know, our overarching address network and, uh, and mail scanning. But as it relates to today's conversation, check deposit is, is front and center on this. Um, but it's, it's the same kind of process that we have with mail scanning, mail forwarding, and then the shredding of those documents too. Um, as Adam was saying in the, in the beginning about the paper, some people do want us to hold on to that and we can absolutely hold on to that paper too. But the other piece is that once it is digitized, you now can store it uh, in, your, in your server. You can have a, the functionality that you would with an email system so you can forward it. You can apply it into other folders, you can share it. Uh, but then also, like I say, we will sh securely shred and dispose of any of those documents that you need. Next slide. So with our, with our check deposit system, um, it really automates that entire paper process for you, right? So the mail comes in, we detect whether it's a check and you get alerted in your account that there's a check there, but you can also set up an automatic check deposit system so that the checks will just automatically go to the bank that you have established in your uh, Earth Class Mail account. Uh, there's no need to ever handle it. The, uh, it just goes right in, you see it. Um, we also have a mobile app that works for it. And so everything is really, really functional uh, to not have the sort of operational burden of any of it. Next. It's a really simple kind of like way to get your head around it is it's, you know, we receive the mail, we scan it, we handle it securely. Um, you now can see that uh, you have a check or any kind of document online. Uh, there's some actions that you can take, um, whether it's like you want to afford it, you want to dispose of it, you want to deposit the check, um, and then it hits your bank account. Uh, it all appears uh, as a, like in an inbox for email. Um, the files are there, the digitized PDF is available to review, and that's essentially how that works. That's great. Thanks, Stephen. Um, and just to give everyone a, a quick overview of Invoiced, uh, many of you may be familiar with it already. Basically, uh, what we're trying to do as a company is automate the entire AR process uh, and accelerate it. And in many cases, as we're about, as we've been discussing, and as we're about to show you in a more detailed way, that includes paper, and it could include issuing invoices uh, through the postal system. It could include receiving checks or other documents. Um, so the the way that our solution works is there there are many different areas of functionality, um, but some of the big bucket areas are things like billing, whether that's very basic billing or advanced billing. We can also connect to your billing system, your accounting system, your ERP if invoices are already being generated, or we can help you take that to the next level if you have specialized requirements there. Uh, we also automate your collections. And so that includes things like being able to remind people um, and handle all the dunning across different channels, whether that's postal mail, whether it's text, whether it's email. Um, also being able to tailor all those communications to different segments or types of customers 
instead of treating them with a, a one size fits all experience. Um, managing all of that collections activity, follow up tasks among your staff, uh, tracking promise to pays, and tracking not just the communication, but what's happening on the receiving side from your customers. So are they viewing uh, the emails that are being sent uh, and all those, those important details? Um, and then we also handle the payment process in a really streamlined and modern way. And so um, if you have a payment gateway or if you don't have a payment gateway, you can very quickly, like literally within minutes, you can set up a branded payment portal that carries your logo, your name, um, and be able to accept online payments like credit cards or direct debit. Um, and you, you can also provide uh, check instructions as well as wire instructions. You can let people sign up for auto pay. Mm -hmm. Um, you can also let them download statements and see their whole transaction history. Um, and they can really manage their entire billing and payments relationship with you on a completely self-service basis so that you don't have to answer questions a thousand times about payments and status and things like that. There's also um, a lot of utility around uh, cash management, whether that's uh, cash application so if you're getting stray payments or if you're getting payments through the payment portal or otherwise, being able to very easily map those to the correct invoices and open balances with the right customers, um, that is a very time consuming task for accounting teams. And we help to speed that up very dramatically. Um, but then also knowing what cash to expect. So we have a lot of data um, that tells us um, you know, when bills are due, how much they're for, who's on auto pay, who's made a promise to pay, who's on an installment plan, et cetera. And so that puts us in a really great position to be able to accurately predict when you're going to collect cash, which is of critical importance, especially these days. Um, so all that, and I'm, we're just skimming the surface, all that is under the roof of one very comprehensive and API extensible AR automation solution. Um, so what I'd like to do now is turn it over to Jared King, who is CEO and co-founder of Invoice. And he's going to show you how all these different pieces come together. We talked about bills going out through the mail, checks coming in through the mail. How do you connect those offline paper processes with very sophisticated AR automation technology? Jared's going to show us that. So Jared, why don't you take it away? Thank you, Adam. And thank you, everyone that is attending. All right, can we see my screen okay? Okay, um, so really excited to show these integrations. These two are my favorite because they take a manual paper-based process and connect it to the digital world and completely digitize things. Um, it's amazing what you can do uh, with both Blob and Earth Class Mail um, just by clicking a button. It, it's very, they're very, very powerful. So what I'd like to show first is the print and mail capabilities with an invoice. Well, we're going to send an account statement to our customer. So we can do either a balance forward statement or we can send an open item and you can choose whatever period on the balance forward you'd like. So we'll just click send and select the letter option. And once again, we have our customer's mailing address pre-filled. And if they have multiple contacts, you can uh, reference that with just uh, this menu here. Um, so once we click send, this will kick the statement over to Lob and they will then do what they do. Um, and you can see in the history tab, uh, which may have gotten uh, pixelated earlier, you can click on the letter that we just sent. Uh, you can see specifics about like where it was sent to, uh, the date it was sent, and our expected delivery date, uh, which is July 30th for this particular uh, mailing. You can also download a preview of what was sent to um, the customer, what the printed document will look like. So whenever we um, download this, you can see our first page is going to be our envelope, um, what shows up on the uh, first page, and then the second page being our balance forward statement. Um, this is just using one of our out of the box templates, um, but you can customize this as well. Um, one thing you might wish to do is maybe you want to draft more of like a formal collections letter. Um, you can put that in you know, front of the statement. Um, if you'd like, or you can change the format to really be, um, you know, anything you'd like with, with our templating system. Okay. Um, so we've just sent a few uh, one-off invoice. We've sent a one-off um, 
statement. Of course, that's not going to be uh, sufficient if you have a lot of invoicing volume to just go through customers and try to remember which one you've sent to and just click the send button. So we have a feature called Smart Chasing, which allows you to automate all of the communications you send out to your customer. So if we go to our collections tab for our customer Acme Corp, we can see one of the sample cadences that we've set up. So this is completely customizable, but we've basically what you can do is you can set a sequence of uh, communications. You can send letters, you can send emails, uh, phone calls, text messages, and uh, do internal escalations as well. So uh, generally your mail step would be the very first item. Uh, we wanna get that to our customer as soon as possible. And then you can set any follow-ups uh, based on account age, based on past due age. In the case where we're using uh, the letter, um, the mail option with Lob, well, what will be sent to the customer will be an open item statement. So if they have many invoices open and credit notes, all of that will be consolidated into a single uh, open item statement with the balance that they have to pay. All right, so shifting gears a bit, once your customer receives an invoice or a statement, they would go to uh, your online portal. Of course, your statement and your invoice would have the payment instructions on it. Um, but if they were to view that, uh, that transaction in the customer portal, so now I'm looking at it from Acme Corp's perspective, this is our payer, um, they could be looking at an invoice or they could be looking at a statement as you see here. And when they click the pay now button, if you are using Earth Class Mail, you have the option to put a check payment method um, in the list of uh, payment types that you want to accept from your customer. Um, you can put in a check option. So what this will do, it will have your payment instructions like where to make, who to make the check out to. It will also have your own um, Earth Class Mail virtual address um, on the payment instructions. So this tells your customer how and, and where to send the check. Whenever your customer is viewing this in the portal, this step is completely optional, but we do give them the ability to leave a promise to pay. So if a check has shown up, with, uh, has been sent by the customer, they can let us know, hey, you should be receiving it next Friday. And they can even put the check number um, on this promise to pay. This feeds into our cash flow forecasting and reporting, and it also helps with accountability. So if that you know July 30th rolls around and we still don't have that check, um, it will pop up as an action item in your to-do list. Okay, so we'll submit that promise to pay. Um, at this point, our customer will assume has sent us a check. So I'm going to jump back into the seller side, uh, what our business under Mifflin would see. Um, so what I've done is I've connected Earth Class Mail Sandbox account uh, to Invoiced. And the way that this integration works, um, it, it's very automated, it's, it's terrific. So it will constantly each day will pull any check deposits from Earth Class Mail. And those check deposits will show up in invoiced as unapplied payments. The reason they're unapplied is because often we may only know the amount, we may know the check number. Um, we may have additional information like remittance advice. Um, but at this point, we usually don't have enough to say for certain which invoices that check needs to be applied to. Um, but we've tried to make that step of connecting the dots. Where does this payment go? How is it applied to having it um, completely reconciled? We try to make that as automated as possible. So once that check is received by Earth Class Mail, um, they'll you know apply. Uh, they will receive the check. They'll deposit it to your uh, bank account. So all of that is fully automated and handled for you. On the invoice side, you'll get an unapplied payment like this. And what we've done is based on the amount um, and the details of the payment we've made a recommendation using our cash match AI algorithm of how you should apply that payment. Um, and then we ha have here, we have a confidence um, rating as well. So you might see that confidence goes down if you have like, let's say all of your invoices are for $500 and it's difficult to tell you know, which one it should apply to. Um, but whenever you get more unique matches, um, the confidence will go up. At this point, um, someone that's responsible for receiving payments would just need to review the payment and check the match uh, that we've made. If it looks good, you can just click the apply button. Um, if there's anything that needs to be changed about it, you can change the customer, which invoices it's applied to. Uh, this does support short pays and overpays. So if your customer pays just a little bit less than what they owe, you can put a threshold, either a dollar amount or a percent um, to detect the short pays and the same for overpayments. 
it will ask you, how do you want to handle this? Do we want to credit the customer or refund? Um, in addition, we will also include, and this is just a sample, these are sample images, but we will include the scanned package from Earth Class Mail. So whatever is included in the envelope uh, that Earth Class Mail scans will be uploaded to invoiced. So if there's remittance advice, the check of naturally uh, would be um, included as well. You can see that um, that documentation, and this can also help with the cash application process. So once the payment looks good and you're ha happy with the match, all you have to do is click apply. Um, so at this point, money was automatically deposited to your bank account, and now you've done the accounting work, you've applied the payment, um, at which point it would be synced to your ERP or accounting system if, if you have one of those integrations uh, set up. So there's obviously more to invoice, um, you know, this, as Adam had alluded to, um, but as it pertains to the law of and earth class mail integrations, this is uh, the most straightforward demo that we have. And, and I absolutely love these products just because, you know, again, how they're bridging that gap between the digital and, and uh, you know, physical world. So hopefully this was helpful and I'm gonna hand it back over to Adam to continue, I think we might do some Q and A. We do have some good and pretty specific questions that are starting to come in. Um, one is um, an invoice, can one enroll various customers as paper invoice customers and send over the invoices in bulk to be mailed out? So that would be done with our chasing feature. So you can create, let me just turn the screen sharing back on. So you can create different cadences. And in that cadence, um, you would have different steps. So in this one, we have a print and mail step. Um, you can then create assignment rules for these cadences as to like how they're applied to your customers. Um, so you could create like uh, a delivery preference field, for example. And so assign this to every customer that has a delivery preference of print or whatever you want to call it. Um, or you can make it your default. And then customers that don't need mail, you can pull them out of the cadence or assign them to a different cadence. Um, but typically it's these cadences which you can create you know any number of that you're using to um, assign uh, you know how you want to communicate with that customer that's great um and then um we do have another question about uh Oh, it looks like Mark, you went ahead and answered uh, one of the questions. There's another question. Do you have anyone who would be able to help with customization and integrations for a small business and do not have IT on site? And even though you have detailed steps on integration, it would take too much time for me to do. Um, and the answer to that is yes, uh, we can absolutely help with integrations and customizations. We have a professional services team that uh, handles that. Um, there's also a question, uh, is invoiced HIPAA compliant? The answer is yes. Um, another one that says ECM is awesome, which we love to hear. Um, let's see here. Oh, if they pay by credit card, how would the transaction memo read on the bank statement? So there's probably two ways to look at that. Look at that and I'll just talk about both because I'm not sure exactly uh, which perspective you're talking about. Um, but from the payer's perspective, whatever merchant uh, account that you have or payment processing service that you use, that would uh, you can set the you know the statement identifier. Um, that's what they would see is however your payment processing is configured. Um, they would see that on their statement, typically your business name. Um, you know, on on your side of it, um, as far as that also depends on your your payment processor. So it's the seller that's collecting the payment. Um, some payment processors do like uh, batch where they, you know, daily, weekly, monthly send all payments, refunds is like one um, payout amount. Um, some payment processors do uh, net, which I personally find more frustrating, but they will have um, your payments, your refunds, chargebacks, and then also deduct the fee that they charge. Um, so it really just depends on the payment processor as far as what you would see, but typically it's going to be some kind of a batch that has all those payments lumped together. I don't know if we want to talk about the earth class mail side of it, how the check deposits would look on a bank statement. 
Yeah, sure. Happy to. Um, I'm actually going to have uh, one of my coworkers join us here. Howdy, everyone. My name is Josh with Earth Class Mail. How are y'all doing? Good, John. Oh, Sharing camera deal here. Yeah, so the check deposit side on the Earth Class Mail piece of it is pretty simple. Because we are, so we'll just take a small step back here. Either through the automation rules, meaning that there's you've set up recipients to automatically deposit checks based off who the mail item is sent to, to the deposit to a specific account, or by more manually reviewing the check and then selecting which account you would like to deposit it to. Through either one of those ways, Earth Class Mail is going to electronically endorse the check, create a deposit slip, and then physically overnight that check to your bank for deposit. <laughs> So the way it would show up on your bank statement would be the same as if you walked into the bank and handed the teller the check yourself. That's the, that's the general case where you walk in, they hand them the check, they deposit it for them. We're just mailing it to them. And a lot of these banks have bank by mail locations where we're just sending the mail directly to the bank to deposit that check as though you were doing it in the house yourself as far as the reporting aspect of it goes. What am I, if I, if you don't mind me um, adding to that, you know, one of my, one of the one things I like the most about Earth Class Mail, we evaluated quite a few different check lockbox options. Um, and, you know, typically this is a service provided through your bank. It's very difficult, very expensive, very time consuming to set up a lockbox through your bank, as we learned. Um, and the experience, the set of experience that Earth Class Mail delivers is just, there's no comparison. It, it's um, completely, it's quick, modern, and and just, completely unlike working with your bank on a lockbox at all. Um, so I, I think there's a big difference there that should be mentioned. Absolutely, super easy to set up, really takes about two minutes to get going. And then the Earth Class Mail team handles everything from there. You give us routing number, account number, and our secure platform that uses bank level encryption and everything. Um, and then one of the places we see the most, or the highest rate of adoption in our check deposit services from business owners that mo own multiple entities. So rather than going and setting up a lockbox for five different entities, you can have one account with Earth Class Mail for one consolidated place for all your mail to go, and then you can select which account you want that check to go to based off who it's being sent to or by manually letting us do it again, all for the same fee. Great, thanks, Jared, for teaming that up. We have another question that just came in. If I'm mailing an invoice and Lob sees a change of address, via NCOA slash move update, does that data get sent back to the billing system to update the customer record? I know that it definitely, it'll definitely send the data back, but Jared, I don't know if it actually updates the actual record within the billing system. Our integration does not make use of that data. Um, I actually didn't even know that was a feature. So perhaps that's something we could look into. But um, yeah, at this point, no, it's it's generally a one-way communication with Lob. So we're just sending the mailing out. Um, and then we're not, uh, the actually we do keep track of the delivery events. So as it moves through the um, mail stream, sometimes the postal service is my understanding will leave like it's hit these waypoints and you can kind of see almost like some rudimentary tracking as the letter moves to your customer. So we do make use of that data, um, but we're not making any address changes or any notifications um, with the invoice lob integration at this point. Mark, could um, the could that type of, of notification be sent um, from lob to the customer who has the lob account so that they could at least be aware of it and be able to update their records in invoiced or in other spots. Yeah, absolutely. Before any of the mailings go out, it'll actually verify the address itself. And if there is an NCOA forwarding address on there, it will kick the data back, let the customer know to update the database. So it is available. I think that we just, yeah, we could probably figure out how to include it as part of the integration as well. It's just a matter of, yeah. But they will be able to get in the lob system for sure. Uh, another question, has Earth Class Mail ever considered remote deposits rather than overnighting the checks. Yeah, we absolutely have. And we have certain clients that are doing that today. It tends to, and it's not restricted to anyone um, specifically, but it's typically used by our clients that either have a very high volume of check, have a very tight time to money requirement, uh, or they have very large checks, multi-million dollar checks where they have security concerns about that leaving our hands again. So we do offer um, what we call remote deposit capture, where we have an integrated bank scanner within our facility. You'd provide us with deposit only credentials and we'd run those checks through 
the same day for the same day deposit. Great. Uh, let's see here. We received letters at Earth Class Mail from a specific group of interested people and then have been manually sending a generic letter reply to these inquiries. Can Lob handle that? I'm not quite sure what the actual use case is. Really, interested people and then have been manually sending a generic letter reply to these inquiries. Um, I think it all depends on how it's actually integrated with the system itself. Okay, I don't I, I, like Jared. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that the integration is built to actually send it back out from that way. Like, I think it's one way, not on a reply way, unless. I don't right. think so. Uh, invoice would not connect Earth Class Mail and Lob in that fashion, but mm -hmm. perhaps there's something you could do directly um, to tie those two systems together when you get a new piece of mail. But yeah, invoice would would certainly not handle that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for for sure. I mean, if it's a direct integration with with Lob and we can send generic letters on the behalf, and if it's directly integrated with any of the systems that you're using to track your data, we can have that as a trigger base. It's just a matter of setting the integration up that way. And then less programmatically, I just to provide an alternative view here. I think they're saying that with Earth Class Mail, they're already receiving invoices, generic statements, et cetera. Um, and Lob and Earth Class Mail are not currently directly integrated, uh, but you'd be able to take that information from Earth Class Mail and very easily send out a piece of mail from Lob, I would imagine. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it says we get letters from inmates and send them a flyer back. Sounds like the question got answered though. Great. Um, any other questions that we can answer about um, any of the three platforms that are being showcased here or how they work together or AR automation in general? We'll give just a few more seconds for folks to chime in. All right, it seems like we have satisfied most of the curiosity that is out there. Um, and, um, you know, just as a follow up, I did want to remind people that we are recording this webinar. We will be sending it out uh, as a recap. Um, oh, sorry, we did just get an, another couple of questions. Um, how do we learn more about pricing, et cetera, for lob and invoicing? Well, I'm so glad that you asked, Melissa, um, because um, you can either, you can visit lob.com directly. You can visit earthclassmail.com directly. You can visit invoice.com. Um, and even easier if you want to see a more tailored demo and more interactive uh, personalized Q&A on this topic and others that relate to AR. You can schedule a demo anytime with Invoiced. Um, the, there's a link there. You probably can't click on it, um, but if you just want to jot that down or if you go to invoice.com, you'll see um, a link where you can request a demo. We'll get that set up for you and be able to answer any questions that you might have. Um, we also have for in, invoiced, we have pricing information at invoiced.com slash pricing. And I'm going to go ahead and type that into the QA here and click on it. And um, Stephen and Mark, if you want to uh, add in your pricing pages as well, um, that should be helpful to Melissa. Um, we had one more question um, Can Earth Class Mail batch checks? Gosh. Yeah, absolutely. So, and it really just, I assume this is talking more about the uh, bank reporting side of it as well. So please clarify if you have any additional questions or clarity there to provide. Um, but so Earth Class Mail, whenever we're going through the check deposit process, as I previously mentioned, we create a deposit slip and electronically every endorse every check and then overnight them to your bank as standard. Each check will be individually enveloped that will be going to your bank, would send out all the checks the same day as requested. And then typically most banks will then sort those 
checks by client and account that they're depositing to, and then batch that day's checks into the same option. So as far as with most banks, and the banks can be able to answer this better for clarity there, uh, but most banks will batch all checks from that day into the same deposit. That's great. All right. So I think maybe that's really, really all the questions that we had. Um, but we really appreciate everyone's time. We will be sending a, a recap and a recording of this webinar. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you to Lob and thank you to Earth Class Mail for joining us. And uh, we hope to be speaking with all of you to help you uh, move your uh, customers to paperless at the pace that they desire. Um, and we can all do that together because of these partnerships and integrations that we have. So thanks everyone, and we'll see you on the next webinar.